Hi everybody, it's Clive with some quick feedback on your portrait assignment. The first thing I must say is I am so impressed by the very high standard of work I've seen. Much of it is of professional quality, so well done everyone. Let's get into it with our first shot. This comes from Bex. It is a classic portrait aspect with the eyes up on the thirds line. That's a lovely natural expression and strong direct gaze that really engages me as a viewer. The light is a little soft, it's maybe outdoors on an overcast day, but it does have a dominant direction from above, so we're getting some shade uh, under the eyes, but not too much. We've still got some light in the eyes, a little shade under the chin, so it's sculpting the face. The face is popping in three dimensions because of that directional light. Great bit of work, Bex. Well done. Moving on to Tanisha's lovely portrait. What I really like about this is this patterned background. It's not too complex, so it's not distracting. It's just some lovely blue lines, and it's in soft focus. So again, it's not pulling my um, attention off this lovely face. What is making it a little hard to read is the extreme canted angle that we've got here, Tanisha. And what I would do in this case is just tilt and crop. I wouldn't go all the way to, to straightening it because I think that defeats the purpose of your, your canted angle that was um, giving it a lovely energy. But I would just go in nice and close and just straighten it up a little bit so that this face is easier to read straight away and it engages the viewer immediately. On to Tony's lovely professional looking studio portrait. Again, lovely bit of light from high above and slightly to the side, so we're creating sculpting shade and highlights on the face. This face is popping out of the dark background beautifully. What I would do here um, is crop tighter because often, the, you know, the top of the forehead is kind of a blank canvas unless there's a really strong expression going on, and the hair also, unless it's something special, um, I don't think it has as much to say as the face. So I frequently like to go in really tight with a portrait. Um, you know, lose, lose the hair or even a little bit at the top of the forehead just so we can get in directly to that expression because the expression and the eyes are where the meat is in a portrait, for me anyway. Moving on to Matthew's um, bit of composite work. And I'm sorry, Matthew, composites are just out of bounds for this paper. Uh, we're really about camera craft here, not about Photoshop. However, quick bit of feedback for you. Um, primarily, it's, it's a lighting problem. This is very unattractive light. I call it Frankenstein light because it comes from below and it's the light that they often light Frankenstein's monster with because it's unnatural. The natural place that we're used to seeing light come from is above in the sky. So when you light someone or something from below, it's unnatural and it's very unflattering and it, it can be, it can add a little spooky edge that we may not consciously understand, but we do pick up in our subconscious that it's unnatural and it just looks off. Um, as a composite, not 100% successful either. You know, I can still see some of the outlines here with your cutting out and you have not matched the lighting on the foreground subject <coughs> with the lighting on the background, so it's really coming across as a fake. Um, but again, in future Matthew, just stick to single frames. James has submitted this lovely portrait. The strength of it is this lovely colour contrast between this big block yellow and this large area of blue, uh, and you know some nice lines going on, drawing us into the frame. Nice direct gaze and relaxed expression. So it's a winner in my book, but there is a little niggle I have, and that is the background. Um, it, it looks a little like the corner of a kitchen to me, uh, for the skirting board and the kind of, you know, the plain wall. It doesn't look like a skating rink. It may be, but it doesn't look like it. And what things look like uh, are what we read in the photo. So pay attention to your background. Is it adding up with all the other things in your shot to create uh, the message that you want to get across? Apart from that tiny niggle, James, I think this is a lovely shot. Another lovely shot has come in from Renee. And the strength of this, again, is the light. Look how that face is popping um, 
from the background in three dimensionals because of the light and shade on it. It's beautiful. That's a lovely direct gaze and those eyes are quite fascinating. So again, I just want to get closer. The other reason I want to get closer is that we've got this big blocky um, chest area in our model and I would flatter her a little bit by losing that and also cropping in will do something else if I show you. Um, okay, so here's like, you know, centered. Eyes up on the thirds, but centered. This is really boring. Um, it doesn't encourage us to really explore the picture much. If you pop her over more on thirds, I'll just crop in a little tighter. A, it takes us closer to that wonderful gaze, those beautiful eyes, that lovely smile. Um, but also, it's creating an implied triangle with the line of shoulder, the ponytail going up through one eye to the corner and a diagonal line and the triangles and diagonal lines just have this um, ability to energize a picture and make it just that little more interesting so keep that in mind. Fantastic piece of work from Liam here and what's so special about it is the light it's coming from the rear we're shooting into the light it's called contre -jour and it's very effective. It creates a lovely piece of rim light around the shoulders and look how it's lighting up the hair. In fact, if, if the, the background here was darker, you'd see this rim lighting even in more strength. The face and the features are a little flat because now she's got her back to the light and she's just facing the, sh you know, we're just getting the shady side of her. But for my money, the general lighting effect and that lovely contra kind of overcomes that and makes this picture special in its own right. So, you know, sometimes you've got to balance the good with the bad. Sometimes you, you might do something uh, that makes a shot weak, as the light on the face here is, but it's acceptable because the strength, that lovely backlight, is so lovely that we can forgive um, any minor flaws in the picture. Lovely natural pose fantastic setting that you know goes hand in hand with this relaxed pose and again a, a really engaging direct gaze from the model great work Liam now look at this this is uh, Nat's uh, I think it's your daughter is it Nat what a fantastic piece of work you know studio light lovely big soft light source from above very flattering on the features. I love this little soft toy because it goes hand in hand with the the subject. She's a child, so we've got a child's toy adding to the story and reinforcing it. She's so beautiful, Nat. Um, again, though, uh, this is a great shot, but just for my money, I would go a little closer because the hair isn't telling much story, whereas those eyes are telling so much story and that beautiful warm child smile is just so strong and uh, I just think getting us closer really grabs the viewer by the eyeballs. James has turned in this shot. Uh, what I love about it is again contra -jour light from the rear creating this beautiful rim light. The gaze is direct it's not a really um, strong expression, but it's a very natural expression, and it's not neutral. His face isn't just, you know, in neutral gear. There's actually some expression here. He's regarding us strongly, uh, and it's it's a very engaging picture. For my money, though, I just I just think the the eyes in the center line there are a little lacking in energy. So you know, I would I would just pop him up there with with a little crop and movement. Chris, this is another great piece of um, high and to one side studio light with a soft light source. Uh, it's just looking a little underexposed so let's just push the exposure a little just to get a, a you know more complete range of tone and maybe just drop the highlights a nudge because her face is starting to blaze a little. So you know that's where I would push it rather than the original. Um, apart from that great expression, lovely pose, nice prop, really liking that chair and nice use of negative space. 
Kerry has turned in a fantastic environmental portrait, you know, of a forestry worker out there in the field. Um, this could be in uh, an annual report or a magazine as a great piece of environmental portraiture. Um, again, though, there's there's a little. You're, I think you're a little generous with the headroom here, and I would just crop in closer. Still telling the same story, only putting more of it in screen rather than you know having all of that headroom which really hasn't got anything to say. So yeah, rule of thumb: just get in get in tighter, and if it if it disturbs you, just back off a little. But you know often going tighter is, is good. Now this, that hair has a little story to tell it. It's like a dancer's bun, isn't it? So I don't have a problem with it at all. The, the background is just this line on the background. It looks like home studio setup. It's a little, a little distracting just because it is a line and not just, you know, a random wavy pattern. So I, I'm kind of tempted to crop closer just to lose that and take us in there. If you want, you know, you can always tilt your subject into the frame a little to give them a little more energy. But now we're getting here, this is this is doing it for me just a little more because what it's giving more of is the beautiful curve, these lines on the shoulders and of course we're getting in to that lovely expression and face. That's just where I would take it but you know this is still pretty good but I just think that grabs the viewer a little stronger. Okay, I'm going to end it there so that this file size doesn't blow out um, and come back and look at everyone else's pictures in part B. So, Copeman out.